Welcome to mini tutorials for Adobe InDesign. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to look at fill with placeholder text or lorem ipsum. Uh, we looked at that briefly in a previous video but I want to give a little more detail on that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at text wrap, uh, the ability to make text wrap around other kinds of objects like pictures. Uh, we're also going to take a look at shapes, fills, and strokes and how to create those. And just as a reminder, the book for this series is available on Amazon.com. Let's go ahead and open up InDesign. So I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to create a new document. We'll open that up and take a quick look at this. Uh, again, this is the uh, Make a New Document dialog. I'm just going to go through this quickly. We're going to make a three-page document. This time I am going to have facing pages on this layout. I'm going to turn the orientation to landscape, and we're going to give this one uh, give it three columns and say OK. So we have our InDesign layout. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Three pages here. This is a facing pages layout, so we have a left page and a right page. Uh, when we put a master on a facing pages layout, there will also be a left master and a right master. And we'll do that in a later video. So I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a text box, and then we're going to fill that text box with placeholder text. So I'm going to go to my Type tool, which is the T tool right here. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to draw a couple of text boxes. So I've got one there, one here like that, and we'll draw in the third one. Now I'd like to connect these together so that as we start working with this, the text will actually flow through all of the boxes. So as we showed in the previous video, I'm going to use the black arrow, so the selection tool. Uh, I'm going to come to the first box and I'm looking for this little connector that's down in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to click once on that and then I'm going to click on the next box. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click once on the connector like that and then I'm going to click on the next box. And these three boxes are now threaded together. Uh, when you have boxes that are threaded together, the text that you put in will flow through those boxes. And many times when you're working with a document, um, you don't have all of the text available yet. Maybe the copy isn't finished. So there is a function in here called fill with placeholder text that uses a, an industry standard uh, kind of fake Latin. It's, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. There's bits and pieces that are from a, a, a speech by Cicero, but it's really been jumbled up. So to find fill with placeholder text, this is under the type tab. So you go to the Type tab, it's the second to last option. So it's this option right here, Fill with Placeholder Text. When I click on that, it's going to put that text in those three boxes like that. Now I'm going to shorten this text up a little bit and I'm going to increase the font size just so you can get a better view as we're working through this exercise. So let me uh, select that text. Always select before you make a change. And we're going to bump that font size up. That might be a little large. Come down a little bit. How about that? That looks a little better. Okay. Um, you might notice, and you should pay attention to this when you're working on your own documents, but I have a little red box in the bottom right hand corner. This red box is telling me that there is overflow text, so some of this text is not visible. And I expected that. I'm not going to make a change on that right now, but you should always be aware of that, that InDesign will not necessarily create new pages or new boxes when you put text in it. So let's make some changes to this. I want to um, bring in another object and I want to make the text flow around the outside of that object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shape tool which is right here and I'm going to create an ellipse. So I'm just going to draw this off to the side for right now like that. I'm going to create my ellipse. I want to give it a fill color and a stroke color. So I'm going to double click on my fill color and we'll pick a color like that. Black stroke color is just fine for what we're working with here. Uh, and then I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to move it over the top of the text. So I'm going to bring this and just kind of slide it into place right now. So right now some of the text is behind this shape and that's really not what I'm aiming for. What I want to have is have the text go around the shape. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to add one more characteristic to the shape. This is not being connected to the text, but it is being connected to the shape. So make sure your shape is connected. 
uh, I'm sorry, your shape is selected. And then when you have that selected, you want to open up a panel called the Text Wrap Panel. So I'm going to go to the Window tab. And right here towards about two thirds of the way down towards the bottom is Text Wrap. I'm going to open up Text Wrap like this. Here's that panel. And I have several options here. This is putting the text behind. Uh, this is putting it around the bounding box. Uh, and this will put it around the object shape. And that's what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to put the text around that shape. Now you may notice it's a little tight on one side. It's a little looser on one, the other side. So I can make some adjustments here. Uh, this is how the border that goes around that. And I'm going to increase that border so it's a little more even like that. And then there's one other little thing I can do here to make the text flow a little a little more smoothly around that. I'm going to select my text like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to full justification like that. And what I get is a little more even calculation of where that edge is. And so it's uh, it's going to be straight around these corners and a little more even around that edge. Lots of ways to do that. That's not the only one. So let's do that one more time. So I'm going to create another shape. So in this time I'm going to create a rectangle. We'll bring that rectangle over here and draw that. Let's give that rectangle a fill color also. Let's make this maybe yellow. Like that. And again the shape is over the top of the text right now. That's not what we're shooting for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my black arrow make sure that rectangle is selected. And then I'm going to, again, go to Text Wrap. Just a reminder, that's under Window, Text Wrap. And I'm going to make that go around. In this case, the bounding box is fine because it's also rectangular. So let's, let's see what we get here. Now we have one little conflict happening because this text and this text is too close together. So I'm going to take this and just scoot it out of the way for right now while we work on this one. And then we can bring that back in. So we'll take that. I'm going to increase the edges on this, so just pushing those margins out a little bit. And you might notice that because the text wrap is attached to this shape, as I make changes to this shape, the type is going to continue to flow around it like that. Okay, so as I make changes here, uh, this will respond based on what the size of the object is that the text wrap has been applied to. We can play with that, we can make it smaller, bigger, but again, the important thing to remember, this text wrap is attached to the shape, it's usually attached either to a picture or um, a shape, or not attached to the text. It seems like it would be attached to the text, but it's really not. Now, talk a little bit more about the shape tool. We've kind of looked very quickly at it, but let me go through that a little more slowly. When we're working with the shape tool, and I just want to get a clean page here to start on. Shape tool is over here on the left. There are two tools that look fairly similar. The one with the X, this is called the frame tool. The one without an X is the shape tool, and that's the one we're going to work with right now. When I click and hold, I'm left clicking and holding. Um, what I have are three options here, a rectangular tool, an ellipse, or a polygon tool. So when I click on my rectangular tool, that's going to let me draw rectangles like that. And we can give that a fill color. We'll make this one just kind of orangish like that. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool just to move that color over there. And again, however you draw those, you can make them tall, skinny, large, fat. Um, if you hold the shift key down, one little thing will happen here, which is it'll give you a perfect square like that. So we can bring in the perfect square. I'm going to grab this color and just add it to that. Now, the ellipse tool works much the same. So if I draw the ellipse, I can make those adjustments like that. And then again, if I hold down the shift key, I get a perfect circle. So again, let's pick up that color and just drop it on these two objects like that. Okay. Alright, the Polygon tool is kind of interesting, uh, so I'm going to come up to my Shape tool again. I'm going to pick up Polygon, and there is a default Polygon in here. And let's go ahead and give that a color so you can see it as well, like that. 
um, if I double click on the polygon tool while it's here, it's going to give me this little dialog, which is for polygon settings. So I can change the number of sides of the polygons. If I want to make that, we'll make this maybe 11. And I can also put a star inset on this polygon. So I'm going to move that up, maybe about 20%. I'll make this a 12-sided polygon. I'm going to grab my polygon tool. We'll say OK here. And it's going to change that, what that object looks like. Okay. Um, there are also some other ways to change what a shape looks like. So if I click on a shape here and I go to Object, uh, there's an option here to convert shape. So for example, if I want that shape to be a triangle, I can do that, come and make a change to that. Or I'm going to click on this shape here, Object, Convert Shape. Uh, if I want a rounded rectangle, those shapes are in there. Uh, so again, those options, those are under Object, convert shape, and then you can find the different options depending on what you have selected. Now, uh, shapes can have fills and strokes. They can also have special effects. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to go ahead and just clear the screen. So we'll take these off. And let's just work with a circle for right now. So I'm going to hold the shift key down so I get a perfect circle just like that. I'm going to Give it a fill color. Maybe we'll go to a different color this time. How about a blue? There we go. And then I'm going to give it a different stroke color as well. So I'm going to take that stroke color and make that yellow. Done. And then I'm going to increase the stroke size just so you can see this as I'm working on it. So let's make that even a little bigger than that. There you go. Now you can see that stroke quite clearly. So again, these shapes, they have a fill color, they have a stroke color. Um, you can change the style of the stroke, and that's up here in the options. Uh, I can come down here and make this a wavy stroke if I want to do that, or I can turn it into polka dots. Um, all sorts of funny little things in here that you can play around with. Um, there's also a stroke panel. So if I go to Window, uh, one of the panels I have available is called Stroke. And I can open that up and that gives me all of the options for the stroke. So I can do things like change uh, what the end cap looks like, change metering on that. That's more important for rectangles and those type of shapes. Um, I can give it a gap color if I want to do that. All sorts of things we can play around with with the stroke panel. So again, that's under Window Stroke is where you're going to find the stroke panel. Very important one. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you is special effects. Make sure you have the objects selected. And what you're looking for is the FX button, which is up here in Options. Um, special effects is also in the Objects tab. Uh, this is very typical of Adobe stuff. There's always about three ways to do anything. So if you find a different way to get there, that's not wrong. That's just how this stuff works. Um, so if you look at Object, Effects, uh, we're going to get the same menu right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that menu. I'm going to show you some of the details of what we're looking at here. Uh, so for example, opacity. This is the transparency setting. I can set that at 100%. I can take that all the way back down to 0, or I can take it up to 50%. I think that's where we'll leave it for right now is at 50%. Uh, I'm going to add a drop shadow to this object. That puts these little gray lines around that. Um, I can make some adjustments to those if I need to. Um, I'm going to put a bevel and emboss on that and maybe even feather it just a little bit on the edges. And we'll say OK to that. So we've made some changes to this object um, just based on those settings. Just to review in this video, we took a look at Fill with Placeholder Text. Reminder, that's just under the Type tab. It's the second to last option there. We also took a look at Text Wrap, and Text Wrap is always found under Window. It's a panel, so you can find that about halfway down. And then the last thing we took a look at were shapes and the fill strokes and effects that you can apply to shapes. And again, shapes are on your main toolbar uh, about right in the middle. Uh, again, take some care between the shape tool and the frame tool. Frame tool has an X in it. Uh, the shape tool is blank. Thank you for your attention. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at RGB and CMYK color. We'll be going into swatches and also looking at Pantone color sets there. And we're going to be playing around some more with the eyedropper tool.